What's up guys, today I'm going to be doing a service on my bike. Uh, I'm doing the 15,000 mile, but it's the same thing as the 5,000 mile, so if you're doing a 5,000 mile, go ahead and feel free to follow along and do the same thing I'm doing. So uh, for my 15,000 mile, uh, first thing we got to do is check all the electronics and switches and make sure that those are working. So basically just turn the bike on and go through all the controls and make sure everything works the way it's supposed to. So uh, headlight works. Horn works, that is really loud in here. High beam, fast light, left turn signal, left turn signal, right turn signal, and right turn signal. I don't know if you can see it reflecting off the door or not, but it is. Hazards, both of those are working, both of those are working. So, uh, brake lights, working. Lights are working. Cool. So that's one. So that's one check mark that we can check off. All right. Next up is the front tire pressure and tread for the Iron 883. It's over there. For the Iron 883, it's 30 pounds in the front, 40 pounds in the rear. I've got 28 and a half in the front, so I'm gonna go ahead and top that off. There we go, 30 in the front. Now for the, for the tire tread, there's a wear indicator, I can't see it, I've got one right here, uh, that when the tread is flush with that indicator, that's 1 seconds of an inch. You're supposed to replace the tires before you get that. Uh, or you can go to an auto parts store or Amazon and get a tire depth gauge. And check your tire depth. See mine is right at 2.30 seconds. I'm going to be replacing these soon. Alright, next up you need to check your fluid level and your front brake wet reservoir. Uh, if you had your bike level up on a stand, you'll look in this little sight glass and there's a little dot right there next to it. You just need the level to be above that dot. Um, mine is, but I'm not going to bother doing that because another part of your service is you're supposed to flush your brake fluid every two years. So I'm going to go ahead and flush my brake fluid while I'm doing this. So if you're doing the 5,000 mile maintenance, then you need to get your bike level and check that. Or if you're, if you change your brake fluid two years ago, then you would don't worry about that, go ahead and change it. Next up on our to-do list is you need to inspect and lubricate your throttle controls. Um, I'm also not going to be doing that today though. Uh, I'll go ahead and walk you through it, but I'm not actually gonna do it because uh, I just had my throttle cables replaced uh, under warranty. That, that's a long story. I'll talk about that in a future video, I'm sure. But, uh, so I'm not going to take my throttle apart. Uh, future Matt, go ahead and drop a, a clip of when I had it apart to replace the throttle to show how that comes apart. Okay, now that you guys are back, uh, once you, you have the, the throttle apart, uh, you'll take these, your adjustments apart, and you'll need to get some sort of uh, cable lubricant and you squirt down on those cables and work the cables back and forth. Basically, you just keep working the cable and squirting the lube down in it until it starts dripping down uh, out of your, or next to your throttle body. And that way you know you've got lubricant all through it. And then once you put your throttle cables back together, you want to adjust them so that, um, I'll put you guys down there in a minute, but there's, there's two stops on the throttle body where the uh, there's a throttle stop and an idle stop, and you want to adjust it so that uh, it hits both stops, but just barely, and you don't want it so tight that it hangs up at either one. You want it to snap back when you let go. All right, so I'm not even sure if you guys can see this or not, but right there, there's, there's one stop that it's hitting when I turn the throttle. It needs to hit that. And then there's another stop all the way open and it needs to hit that. 
So basically, you want to turn it uh, with your throttle cables all the way loose. It probably won't hit either one. So you want to tighten your uh, throttle cable until it hits that stop when you pull it all the way open and then tighten your idle cable until it hits that stop when when you let all the way off the throttle and then uh, you just want to turn the handlebars one way and the other and keep checking make sure it's hitting and also make sure that it's not hanging up on anything and you might need to uh, back one or the other cable off to make sure nothing binds up and that it snaps back and moves freely. Next we're going to inspect our air cleaner and clean it if necessary. Now, as you guys know, I still have the stock air cleaner, so if you have an aftermarket air cleaner it might be a little different, but it should be pretty close. If there's any uh, road debris or uh, just road grime in here, you're going to want to clean that out, but uh, mine's pretty clean so I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, next up is the air filter. Alright, and then we take the filter off of these uh, three little star bits. They are P27s. So, I just broke a gasket, uh, taking it off, so I'm going to run up to Harley and get a new one, I guess. But, uh, once you get the filter element off, uh, you can rinse it with some soap and water to get it clean, or if it's extra dirty, the manual recommends uh, soaking it for 30 minutes in the water. Mine is pretty gross, so I'm going to do that. I'll let that soak for a minute. While that's uh, doing that, I'm going to go get some lunch. Alright, now I'm going to come back and check on my air filter. Alright, so I'm supposed to rinse it with clean soap and water. Uh, I let it soak for a little bit. Um, I'm going to run inside and use the sink real quick just to rinse it out real good, get all the rest of this junk out of it. And then, uh, the manual doesn't say to let it dry before you put it back in, but I think I'm going to anyway. I'll be right back. All right, next up is changing the engine oil and filter, but it's better to do that with warm. So I'm going to go run some errands real quick and get my bike nice and warm and I'll change the oil when I get back from that. Alright, uh, one more quick thing before I go on my ride. Uh, one thing that's not specifically specified uh, in the maintenance schedule, but I like to do anyway, is I like to check the torque of my uh, exhaust nuts. Uh, and I like to do that cold, so I'm going to do that real quick before uh, I go warm up the bike. Do the oil change. Uh, exhaust flange nuts are uh, 96 to 120 inch pounds, so anywhere between there. See, I got a little bit of movement, that's why I like to do this. Yeah, see, got a lot of movement out of those, so that's why I like to check them and tighten them down every now and then. There we go. Now I'm going to go for a ride and warm it up to change the oil. Alright, so this video is getting a little long, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it here, 
and we'll pick up with part two next time.